Okay, I'm sitting at an Exxon gas station tonight, getting ready to do a live Fox interview on the Kennedy Show. We're going to talk about this recent emergency situation on I-95 with vehicles being stranded for 19, 20 hours at a time, people stuck in their vehicles. What should they have in their vehicle for a scenario like that? What type of personal kit can you put in your vehicle for a scenario that may happen just like that? We're going to talk about that for about five minutes on the Kennedy Show tonight on Fox News. And then I'm going to follow it up with a video tomorrow right here. So stay with me, guys. Okay, so what I want to talk to you guys about today is a little bit about emergency kits for your vehicle, especially in wintertime. Obviously, I did that interview last night with the Kennedy Show on Fox. And we talked a little bit about the things that people should have had in their vehicles and may not have had when they were stuck on I-95 for up to 20, 22 hours at a time in place in their vehicle. So the first thing that we need to understand is there's certain basic emergency gear we keep in our vehicle all the time. And obviously, because I drive a large 4x4 like this and I do a lot of off-road stuff, I have probably more emergency gear in my vehicle than most people would have. I have, you know, the standards of jacks, repair tools, jumper cables, things to be able to fix a flat tire with, things to be able to communicate with over distance like ham radios and things like that if I'm in a wilderness environment. So I have lots of extra things in my vehicle, including things in my vehicle like a winch, recovery tools like axes, shovels, large saws, traction boards, all those types of things you wouldn't be carrying necessarily in your daily driver on your commute. So what I want to talk to you about is, aside from all that vehicle emergency gear, what should you keep in your vehicle in the winter time in case you get stuck in your vehicle like these poor folks on I-95 did? It's not an exhaustive list. It's not something you have to go out and buy a whole bunch of brand new gear to assemble. And it's something that doesn't take up a lot of room in your vehicle either that you can put in there and feel much more secure if something were to happen. Okay, it's a really windy day here in Southeast Ohio, so I hope a lot of that's not coming through on the mic. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of walk through this basic level stuff that I've got here. But what I wanna talk to you about real quick is first the mentality of an emergency and being stuck in a situation like that. Because I read a lot of comments on the internet and people were like, oh, well, you should have had water. You should have had food. You should have had things to keep warm. Well, that's pretty much, that's a no brainer in a lot of ways. But at the same time, think about the fact that you're only talking 20 to 24 hours for most of these people. And you can go way longer than that with no water or food. So really the big thing that you should concentrate on in an emergency like that is keeping warm. Hypothermia is going to kill you much quicker than not having a snack and not having something to drink in that short time. Should you have water and food in your vehicle? Sure you should. It's going to make you more comfortable. But at the same time, what you have to think about is what that food and water is going to do to you over the next few hours. Because sooner or later, you're going to have to get rid of it. And you have to have a way to do that. And that's something a lot of people don't think about. And then you should also have some type of an external heat source that you can utilize so that you're not using the gasoline and the battery of your vehicle the entire time and running that resource down to zero in case the situation lasts longer than you think it would. So real quick, we'll talk about that. In a normal vehicle, and I'm going to talk about something like this Jeep, you're going to burn approximately a gallon of fuel for every hour that that vehicle is idling. Now you may not be able to idle that vehicle continuously anyway, depending on the scenario, the snow drifts and things like that that may be blocking your exhaust. You don't want carbon monoxide fumes in the vehicle. You should always crack a window when you're running your vehicle, no matter what the situation is. But you don't need to run your vehicle continuously. You need to make sure that your vehicle is warm to begin with, that you're dressed properly, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then you can get away with running your heater about 10 minutes out of every hour, running your vehicle about 10 minutes out of every hour, if you are able to do that, and then shut it off again for another 50 minutes. And now we'll conserve that resource of gasoline for a much longer period of time. Now, other things that you can do is you can carry things in a simple kit that you can effectively radiate heat within the vehicle, like some type of food can with some emergency candles in it. These are nine hour emergency candles. One of these candles inside this tin burning on the console of your vehicle in the center console or something like that, that you can monitor, will radiate quite a bit more heat than you believe it will inside of a vehicle that's closed in. 
Again, you're going to want to crack a window or two. But it will give you a heat source that can last you many, many hours, depending on how many candles you have with you, beyond just running your vehicle. Clothing. You know, you should always have something that's probably some of the warmest clothing you have in the trunk of your vehicle or in the back of your vehicle any time that you're going to travel in the wintertime, just in case. Most of us don't travel bundled up because we have a heater in our vehicle. So we travel fairly light, you know, like a sweatshirt or hoodie or something like that. And then if we have to stop for an extended period of time, we're going to get cold very quickly. So we need to be able to pull a resource from our trunk or the back of our vehicle, like a heavy duty winter hat. It could be a toboggan, could be a wool toque of some kind, something for your head to trap heat. A nice heavy duty pair of winter mittens is always going to come in handy. A good heavy winter coat like this wool coat is fine. It can add another layer of warmth over top of whatever you're wearing and trap some heat. Then you need something that's going to enclose you, that's going to create that loft and insulation. And that could be something like a heavy duty wool blanket, but it doesn't have to be. You may not have a wool blanket laying around. Something like a moving blanket would do in a pinch. Something like a sleeping bag is very good because you can pull that sleeping bag all the way up over you, sit in the front seat of your vehicle, completely enclosed and cocooned in that sleeping bag and keep yourself fairly warm as long as it's a good sleeping bag. So you can use a lot of things from your house to build this kit. Now, let's talk about things like using the bathroom because it's inevitable that's going to happen in a 24 hour period. And you're either gonna get out on the interstate and do it if you're stuck there, or you're gonna do it somewhere in your vehicle. It may not be feasible for you to carry a five gallon bucket in your vehicle to use the bathroom. I'm a big fan of Harvey the Bucket. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that. I have a toilet seat that I carry with me in my Jeep, and I have bags, liners, that are made for a bucket toilet. You could take these same liners and use even a number 10 coffee can, put these liners in there, put some wet wipes in there, and you've got yourself a pretty decent toilet kit. And then, once you're done with this, you can pull the liner, and you can throw it in the trunk to freeze, or whatever the case may be, and get rid of it the next available location. The other thing that's good to have in a toilet kit that will help you out tremendously is something like cat litter. And I just got an old vitamin bottle here that's full of clay-based cat litter. Cat litter is a good thing to have in your vehicle in the wintertime anyway in large bags because number one, it adds weight to the trunk and puts weight over the axle of the rear of the vehicle. But number two, it can help you gain traction if you get stuck in the snow. But it's also very absorbent. So something like this that you dump in the bottom of that bag before you use it can absorb a lot of moisture if all you're doing is urinating in it and you're able to use it more than one time. If you don't have something like this in your vehicle and you're a little unprepared, most people have a shopping bag somewhere in their vehicle from the last time they were at the gas station or something like that. I have four or five of them stashed all over the front of my Jeep because I use them for trash bags in my Jeep. Something like that can be used in an emergency as well that will trap that waste and it can be transported back to the back of the vehicle in the trunk or whatever to freeze for discarding later. But a toilet kit like that is something that you always want to have in your vehicle. Something that you can get rid of the waste in, something that you can clean yourself up with, and then possibly something that will hold that liner in place while you're using it. Or you can just put it between your legs or whatever you have to do out in front of you if that's what you need to do. Using the bathroom in a vehicle is going to be an important part of a longer term emergency like that, where it's going to be many, many hours. So you're gonna to need to plan for that ahead of time if you can to make the job easier and cleaner. Okay, so going beyond those two items of heat, external heat source and ability to use the bathroom, and then clothing and blankets, things like that extra that we'd have to keep our body warm, which is the most important things. You're going to want at least a couple of brand new big lighters in your kit. You can put them right in that same can with those candles in your five gallon bucket and just leave them in the vehicle. Forget they're there. A headlight with batteries, spare, will keep you from having to A, drain your cell phone using the flashlight or B, drain your battery using the interior lights of your vehicle. You can use this and it will work just fine. An extra set of batteries and a headlamp, a good headlamp will last you for quite a while in an emergency situation if you're only using it when you absolutely need it. Those can also be stored easily in the five gallon bucket in one of the cans. Now, if you want some food and water, that's fine. Get you some snack bars of some kind. Don't get something that needs to be prepared in any way, shape, or form. Just something that you can eat very quickly on the fly. Something you can put in your belly just to satisfy the hunger. 
It's not a metabolic need at this point in just a few hours. It is a psychological factor. So something you can put in your belly is really all you need. And then again, most people in an emergency immediately think, I got to have food, I got to have water. Carry some water in your vehicle. You know, put four bottles of water in your vehicle. That's enough, even if you were exerting yourself to last you more than 24 hours. But don't drink it like it's going out of style, like it's the last water you're ever going to have. Ration this stuff, because the more of it you drink, the more you're going to have to use the bathroom. And you're not going to need that much to sustain your body metabolically for a 24-hour period. Drink a half a bottle every 12 hours. Go with that and see what happens. If you're just dying of thirst, drink a little bit more. But I would say a half of one of these water bottles every 12 hours is probably enough. And you could sip it every now and again to spread that out if that's what you wanted to do. Conserving resources is what any survival scenario is about, including one in a vehicle. Now, the last thing I would tell you is that, you know, I have this Jackery 500 that I carry in my vehicle all the time, which is a large battery storage source for energy so that I can recharge peripheral devices or run peripheral devices. You don't need something that extravagant for this situation. You could buy yourself a storage brick, 2,900 milliamps, somewhere along that neighborhood, like an anchor brick or some other brand that you choose, but have a brick in spare, fully charged for your phone. Because again, you never know when the battery of your vehicle is going to die, or you're not gonna have that resource to use, or you wanna just conserve that resource by not charging your phone off of it. And a spare brick will allow you to do that. That brick will last probably three, four charges of your iPhone from almost dead to full. And then you'll be able to communicate with people in the, you know, outside the emergency, listen to news and things like that if you need to, and understand what's going on without having to run the radio of your vehicle again, which uses the vehicle's battery, which you don't want to do. All right, guys, I appreciate you joining me out here for this video today. Just a quick follow-up on this I-95 emergency from my interview last night with Fox on the Kennedy Show. I'm also supposed to follow up with her on Thursday, our podcast, to discuss some other survival scenarios as well. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.